make sure I'm turned on. morning. Isn't it a beautiful day today outside? I was talking to someone in Fairbanks yesterday and they have 96 inches of snow. So I'm thinking it's pretty gorgeous here with the sun shining and feel the energy. Spring is coming. So because of what's going on in the world today, I would like to start today's service by reading Ernest Holmes' prayer for world peace. I know there is but one mind, which is the mind of God, in which all people live and move and have their being. I know there is a divine pattern for humanity. And within this pattern, there is infinite harmony, peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness. I know that the mind of man, being one with the mind of God, shall discover the method, the way and the means best fitted to permit the flow of divine love between individuals and nations. This harmony, peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness will be experienced by all. I know there shall be a free interchange of ideas, of cultures, of spiritual concepts, of ethics, of educational systems and scientific discoveries, for all good belongs to all alike. I know that because divine mind has created us all, we are bound together in one infinite and perfect unity. In bringing about world peace, I know that all people and all nations will remain individual, but unified for the common purpose of promoting peace, happiness, harmony, and prosperity. I know that deep within every person, the divine pattern of perfect peace is already implanted. I now declare that in each person and in leaders of thought everywhere, this divine pattern moves into action and form to the end that all nations and all people shall live together in peace, harmony, and prosperity forever. 
and so it is. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I just want to remind you that there are prayer request forms on the back table. So if you have something that is heavy on your heart or something that you would like us to celebrate with you, if you fill out one of those prayer request forms and put it in the prayer box, Reverend Yvonne and I will pray with you and for you all week. Uh, there's also... Uh, I think I moved something here. <laughs> if you're not on our mailing list, you can fill out that form and we will add you to our mailing list. That being said, I believe we have some special music for you this morning. Share that power of love with everyone. 
So it's time in our service where we the blessing of our children. Is that working well? I can hear it and then I can't. Okay. Okay, so I'll use this one instead. And maybe I will get this to turn or maybe I will not. <laughs> I'm having a moment today. So it's time to do the blessing of our children, and I'm sure most of you remember that. So if you would please join me in blessing all of the children of the world and the child within each and every one of us. Thank you, Don. We see you, who you really are, made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you. We love you. And, and we, we love, love you. you. And, love and so it is. <laughs> you did this. Nope. Okay. I, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. And so right now I'd like to have us move into that, that silent space, that space within where we commune with the one, knowing truly there is only one life, and that life is God, and that life is perfect, and that life is my life now. That life is wholeness and wellness. That life is love and perfection. I know there is absolutely nothing, nothing outside of God. I know that each of us is one with that divine and holy presence, one with love, one with truth, one with peace, one with the one. So I speak my word this day, knowing that as we move through this time, we move through it with ease and grace, uplifted by the one, surrounding one another, in light and in love and in peace and in joy and knowing the truth of our beingness, that we are one with the divine. I know that all of our activities unfold easily and effortlessly. I know that each person we see, we greet as a child of the living God blessed and holy and I am grateful I am grateful for the powerful presence of spirit within us I am grateful for the powerful presence of spirit within our activities I give great thanks now as I release this word to the perfect working of the perfect law which always always and only says yes please join me in affirming and so it is Thank you. So let's just do that. Breathe in and breathe out the power of love, knowing truly, truly each one of us is a child of the divine. So I want to thank our musicians for inspiring us this morning. And so my talk today is about um, Lent, because last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday, and for the Christian world, that's the beginning of Lent. So that being said, I had to get out Charles Fillmore's book called Keep a True Lent. And I want to share with you some thoughts from the foreword, which is by Georgiana Tree West. She calls Lent, quote, a preparation for the resurrection of the mind from the darkness of its sins, doubts, and false beliefs into the light of understanding. 
unquote. The idea then is it is a time for cleaning out our false beliefs into becoming receptive and to inviting in the truth. She further says, learn to fast from all unworthy thoughts and feast on the good and true. Fast from criticism and condemnation and feast in brotherly love. Fast from false beliefs in sickness and weakness and feast on the truth of God's omnipresent perfect life. Now is the time to affirm the power of the Christ spirit indwelling in all men everywhere and influencing their thoughts, words, and actions to work for the good of the whole. We all want to be of some influence establishing world peace. So, I don't know about you, but some of us make Lent an event. When I was a kid, I, you know, I had these things to give up, like chocolate or going to the movies. Not something that wasn't too difficult to do, but, but so I felt like I was, you know, sacrificing. Well, there is something to be said for the discipline of giving things up that we consider to be a luxury. There's something to be said for that, but there is also another approach to Lent. Lent could be or is an acronym for letting go of every negative thought. Letting go of every negative thought. It's my understanding that to keep a true Lent, one of the things we need to do is to understand that in our lives, God is always first. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind says, a steadfast determination to attain some purpose, the letting go of all that opposes it, a complete reliance upon the law of good, and an unqualified trust in spirit. This is true fasting and true, true prayer. So what he is telling us is Lent is a time of cleansing. It's a time to let go of our selfish thoughts, of our negative thoughts. It's a spiritual time, and it's a challenging time because I don't know about you, but for me, letting go of some of my um, negative thoughts can be a bit of an issue because I've held on to them for a long time. I'm not quite ready maybe to let them go. But to let them go and to embrace positive thoughts that reinforce our spiritual principles. Last week, Reverend Yvonne talked about forgiveness, letting go, letting go of the ties the past has upon us. Lent is a time to rededicate ourselves to positive thinking and to positive acts as we move forward in letting go of every negative thought. It is a time to listen to the inner urgings of our spirit. Peace, be still, and know. We get to listen to the truth. It is time to let go of the things that are doubtful and uncertain to us and to build a foundation of having a firm faith, a firm basis in the divine. I believe Lent is a preparation for the believer, that would be you and me, for a resurrection. It is a resurrection of the spirit of the divine, which resides within each of us. The word Lent actually comes from an old English word meaning lengthening, lengthening the days and spring. It is during Lent, at least in this half of the world, where we really do see the lengthening of days and the beginning of new growth. It is that time when we get to see in our world newness happening all around us, don't we? And a seed, when planted in fertile soil, produces fruit. So our job is to nourish this plant, to prepare the soil with seeds of faith, hope, love, and gratitude. We have so many things to be thankful for. Our job is to stand firm in our faith, knowing that we are divinely guided and that the presence of the divine is within us. 
it's time to pause and reflect on conditions and situations that we've been holding on to in our hearts and to cultivate the soil, pulling the weeds, letting go of what no longer serves us. Release those negative thoughts. Forgive. Forgive. Take the time to meditate on your oneness with the divine and remember we are not weak. We are not needy. We are power expressions. We are powerful and we are energized by the divine as it expresses through us and in us. Let us realize we are ready and we are able to do what is necessary that is set before us because we are enough. Know this with me. I am enough. Would you say that with me? I am enough. Each of us is a reservoir of strength and power, and we can draw on that inner strength at any moment. We are a reservoir of power. There have been times, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life when I have doubted this truth and those thoughts of inadequacy, not being good enough, not enoughness have come in. And we need to pause then and remember our uniqueness. We are unique, individualized expressions of that divine. And we bring our particular gifts into the world. Each of us has a gift to give to the world. Let us be grateful. Let us be grateful for those gifts and fill our days with joy and fill our days with peace and with friendship and love. In Matthew, it says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. And to do that, we must let go of our stinking thinking and our negativity. And we must embrace our wholeness, our goodness, our oneness, our good enoughness because we are enough. So who am I and why am I here and what is my purpose? Even though I'm getting older, every day I still discover something new. Every day I continue to learn and to grow. How about you? Why are you on this planet? Hmm. On this journey, we get to grow. We get to thrive. We get to become. We get to awaken to our possibilities. Why are we here? Why are you here? Well, you are here to express love. You are here to express that divine presence that resides within you. That is who you are. That is why you're here. And that is our purpose, to be love, to be love. It is our purpose to be an example, to allow love to work through us and not to get caught up in hate and negativity, which is so easy to do in this time. By letting go of every negative thought, Lent, and looking for and claiming the good, each one of us helps to change the world around us. We use divine possibilities to create a divine outcome. We use divine possibilities to create a divine outcome as we tune in, as we tune in to that still small voice, as we tune in to that divine wisdom, as we open our minds and our hearts and we listen and we pay attention. We pay attention trying to look at something like you've seen it for the very first time is an exercise in awareness. Let go of the judgments you had about it before, but look at something like you've never seen it before. Forget anything you knew about it or felt about it and listen to your senses and allow your body to process the new information with no preconceived ideas. Feel the wonder of it. Feel the beauty of it. Feel its energy and let it resonate with you. You see it all the time with little children when they find something new, that awe, that joy, that love, that inspiration. And then I want you to think of someone or something that makes you laugh. 
I mean, it really makes you laugh right down to the tips of your toes. You laugh deeply. It gives you joy. Think of that. It's not frivolous to laugh. It's not a waste of time to laugh. It's important to your health. Laughing is healing just as crying is healing. It is important for us to acknowledge and to express our emotions. Laughing is good. So what I'd like to ask you to do when you go home is to set a timer for one or two minutes for a short period of time and then sit in the silence with your thoughts. Now, I used to have an application on my phone when I was at work, and sometimes I, I had to go into the little girl's room so I could be totally alone. But the timer would ring, and I would go into that quiet space wherever I was for one or two minutes, and it would refresh me and reinvigorate me for the rest of the day. No music, just silence. No activity, just sitting observing your thoughts, not judging them, not controlling them, not creating them, just observing them. And if you think something or feel something that you, you um, think is unpleasant, address it. Address it by saying, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And then let it go. Watch how your mind works. Watch how it fills in the blanks. Watch as if you were a scientist doing an experiment. Doing an experiment. You might learn something about yourself if you can stay in the present moment. In every situation, all of the time, we have an opportunity to recognize the divine potential of any situation, to recognize that what appears to be negative can be turned into something positive if we make the highest and best choices. When we look for the good things, guess what? That's what we find. We get to look for the good things, we get to claim the good things, and we know that divine possibilities are revealed to us in all circumstances if we are open and receptive to the input of the cosmic. Letting go of every negative thought, Lent. As we let go of those negative thoughts, we open our hearts. We look within. And what do we find? We find inspiration. We know our strength. We know our strength because it is the strength of the divine. And we know as we listen to, in, to our still small voice, we know that inspiration from the divine. We tune into God and we open our hearts and our minds to divine wisdom. And when we do that, we are divinely guided to the highest and best possibilities that are available to us each day every day. When we ask in faith, when we affirm in faith, the law responds. We are ever alert to the whispered songs of spirit. When the way seems dark, I've had those moments, and I don't know where to turn, and I don't know which path to take. I've had those moments, haven't you? That's when we can look to God for sure to guide us, to guide us, to embrace the possibilities that are there for us. Think about this. Your state of being evolves every day, every day. And our understanding evolves daily as well. We can move mountains. It is our silent communication with the divine in our state of being that causes our confidence to grow. When we ask in faith, when we affirm in faith, the law responds. We have the power to observe Lent. We have the power within us to let go of every negative thought, don't we? Letting go of every negative thought. 
We have the power to let go of our worries and our fears if we choose to do so when we believe, when we put the divine first, when we open our hearts and our minds to inspiration and guidance, when we feel renewed and capable to make positive changes in our life because we feel that connection to the one within us. It might mean letting go of that which is familiar to you, and that can be pretty scary sometimes and quite uncomfortable. It is all of those challenging events that help us to grow, that help us to become, to be the person that we are today. And the person that I am today is not the same person that I was yesterday. And the person that I am today is not the person that I'm going to be tomorrow because I'm evolving. We are all evolving constantly. We are wise. We are loving. We are living. We are evolving. Sometimes I may feel lost in my humanness. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel so lost in my humanness and I say, why me, God? And the answer is, why not? Why not you? Why not you? Understanding our vulnerability helps us to be compassionate and to embrace those who are different from us, knowing that we are all one. And isn't it great that just like a box of crayons, everyone is different? <laughs> Variety, the spice of life, and yet we're all one. When we let go of our negative thoughts, when we let go of what no longer serves us, we grow. We grow in spiritual understanding. We grow in our capacity to love. Every prayer, every thought, Every action has an impact on us. It is important to move from the negative to the positive so that our lives are filled with goodness. As I mentioned earlier, prayer and fasting are spiritual practices in many faiths that contribute to the resurrection of the spirit. Lent, letting go of every negative thing, is a time to contribute to the preparation of our spiritual growth. We move into the silence. We move into the calm. We move into the serenity. It is here. It is here in that silence that we find renewal, that we find rebirth, that we find resurrection. It is here that we learn the divine way of gentleness and humility. And it is here in this place of release that I discover that power within me and that you discover that power within you. Through prayer, we let go of what no longer serves us. And though it may not change our circumstances, it certainly changes the way we respond and react to our circumstances. It changes our attitude towards those things that come up and we gain understanding, and we gain insight. As I let go of every negative thought, I make more room for love. I make more room for that divine presence within me to express. As I let go, I allow that love to expand, to encircle our community, to encircle our city, to encircle our country, to encircle the world. As I let go, I make more room for love and for peace. So may love and peace prevail. Please join me in prayer. Sweet, sweet spirit. Father, Mother, God, that divine and holy essence in which we live and breathe and have our being, that divine presence that breathes us, God, who is light and life and love and peace and joy and abundance, God truly is all there is, and I am one with it. 
And if that is true for me, that is true for all, one with the one, one with light, one with love, one with peace, one with joy, one with health and with wholeness. And so as I speak my word this day, I speak it knowing truly peace, peace prevails. I know that as we move through this time of change and anxiety, we embrace the wholeness of the one, knowing that truly God supports and strengthens each one of us. We are whole, perfect, and complete, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that powerful presence of spirit within each of us this day. I am grateful for the light and the love and the power of the divine as it shines into each of our lives. I am grateful for the opportunity to be here now. I simply say thank you as I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always and only says yes. Please join me in affirming, and so it is.
such a beautiful song and, and so appropriate. Letting go of what no longer serves us. So I'd uh, like to ask you now to join me in this time of giving and receiving. So those of you online, there is a place on our website where you can donate. And those of you here in the sanctuary, there is a basket on the back table. So I ask you now at this time to take your tithe, your gift, your offering, not only in your hand, but in your heart. And join with me in this prayer of spiritual giving and receiving. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is.